Well, good morning to you. There is no better way than to start your day with a good quality coffee. Now, I've been playing around a little bit recently, actually, as you just saw in the video before this clip, I used a Mocha Express, also known, or referred to at least, as a cafetiere. And the reason why I'm doing this is just because over Christmas time, we get sent lots of lovely hampers that have got some really beautiful ground coffee in them. And whilst our machine can take ground coffee, I just like to stick beans in it and I like to use either the French press or that Mocha Express to make coffees using all of the different flavoured coffees that we get sent in the hampers. And so that is why this morning we decided to go for Mocha Express. It takes a little bit longer than the machine does, but it's all part of the process. But anyway, I'm currently sitting in my office because as you would have known, last week's video didn't go out until, well, hopefully Thursday, which is today, because I had an upload issue last night and it appears that I am too updates out on my Mac. I wonder if that had something to do with it, I don't know. But the video kept on uploading to 100% and then when it started to process the video to SD, which is like the second phase of uploading a YouTube video, it just gets stuck on 0% and it doesn't move. So I cancelled the upload, tried to re-upload it again, same thing happened and it got to about 8.30 p.m. and I was like, it's just too late. So. I'm having another go at pushing the video live today. Currently trying to actually update the desktop before I start that upload and I'm supposed to be leaving the house in five minutes. And the software update is currently saying 25 minutes. So I think I'm in a bit of a pickle. I might have to take my laptop with me and a hard drive and try and upload it because today we're heading to Manchester. Some of you may have remembered in, I would say it was probably the back end of summer I received a lovely uh, made-to-measure shirt from a company called Dooley & Rostron. They're based in Manchester and they specialise in made-to-measure garments including suits, shirts, shoes, you name it, men's fashion, they've got it covered. And so we're going to be heading to their flagship store which is in Manchester and talking of coffee actually, they do have a cafe I think inside their store. We'll be exploring and finding all this out later today and I vaguely remember that they actually have their own coffee beans. Um, don't hold me to that, but there is at least a strong connection to coffee and their store in Manchester. Today I'm going down for a very exciting fitting for a new tuxedo. Now, it's not every day you get to wear a tuxedo, but every now and then I have the privilege of being able to attend some red carpet events and it would be lovely to have a really nice well-fitting suit for those events, like to the T. And so hopefully, fingers crossed, today we're going to be taking a look at a few different designs because believe it or not, there are lots of different designed penguin suits. They're not all cut from the same cloth and uh, we'll be looking at different styles of lapels and also like style of trousers. There are so many little details that you can specify and part of the made to measure process is of course being able to select whether you want pleats, whether you want a double breasted blazer, the thickness of your lapels, the size of the notches or if you don't have any notches at all. So with all of these decisions, we need to sit down and we need to come up with the exact tux that we want to create. And then once we've achieved that, the guys will then measure me up and they'll send off for the order of that item. And I'll then return back to store or we'll have a meeting in London where we'll do a balance fit. And that's where they will essentially just pin any last little tweaks that they need to make on the suit, um, on me. And so it does fit like a glove. And then, before you know it, I'll have my brand new tuxedo ready to attend those classy events. So I am gonna stop rambling because I do need to jump onto the train and try and deal with what's gonna happen with tonight's video. So we'll see you probably on the way down to Manchester.
well we are currently a couple of hours into our journey we are past Macclesfield now so it shouldn't be too long until we arrive to Manchester Piccadilly we're then going to jump into a quick cab across to 38 King Street which is where the flagship store is based I also did a little bit of digging around uh, the coffee shop that I mentioned earlier so the coffee shop is based within the store and it's called the factory they've actually curated their own special coffee blend using the North Star coffee roasters in Leeds so it's a combination of three different coffee beans that are blended down and they obviously sell that um, as the factory coffee in store they also have a bakery where they make freshly uh, baked produce to sell alongside their coffee and so we're going to be experiencing that today which should be very lovely because I'm in need of a coffee it's currently coming up to lunch time and about an hour and a half ago we had a little bit of breakfast on the train which was surprisingly good I had scrambled egg and uh, salmon with a little bit of lemon juice very nice to Manchester Piccadilly where the service will terminate thank you Welcome to Manchester. I know a lot of people have moved here. Do you? Yeah. Ah, Piccolinos. Stunning building, that was. Welcome to Delia Rostrum, King Street. Yeah, mate, we have to. This looks smells great. Yeah, it smells amazing. Gonna go for you. I will have a kind of OG It's a cappuccino for me, please. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, see a picture on the wall. Well, if you get it sorted, it's a long way. So we, with that, and then we have sort of go down the tucks. Whether you're going to go for a two-piece, three-piece, whether you're to have a different paper jacket as well. So we're currently just looking through some of the uh, different fabrics that are available. And if you have a look next to the fabric, down here. Can you see that okay on the camera? <laughs> you actually get a visualization of what the fabric would look like on a jacket. So it's particularly prominent on some of the lighter fabrics. You can actually see on the jacket how it'll look. So here's the actual fabric in real life. You can feel it, you can see it, and then that's how it would look on a jacket. Yeah. This is really important actually because something that I struggle with when looking through fabric books like this, <laughs> it's so hard to visualize that as a jacket. So for somebody like me, this is amazing because it means that I get a visual representation of what the fabric actually looks like. So superb. <laughs> stands out you know an extra to come on so it's a bit more of a border in itself no, that's not going to work so nicely on that i know you know it's going to be somewhat kind of different so obviously so the thing is with the sand this itself is, this is this is so much denser yeah and it just doesn't have anything at all so it just it just takes for example a needle yeah that's to be ever so slowly kind of pull on it and it can just create a Thank you. 
And then you've actually got like Lower Piana, Holland and Sherry, um, Porter and Hart, and all these other different kind of mills there as well. Okay, but, lovely. Yeah. Perfect. So these are your own fabrics. Yeah. Lovely. And there's a lot of them. <laughs> One, two, or even three buttons. And then of course on top of that okay. as well, choosing the type of lapel you want to go for too. So whether you want to go for either the notch lapel, the little V cut out, the peak lapel, so it's kind of pulled up, or even, for example, the shawl collar. Yes. This is the uh, fun part, I think. Yeah. This is where it's properly starting to come together yeah. as well, isn't it? So yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have a good look through these. Just to give you guys an update where we're at at the moment, we have, um, this is the fabric that we're going to be using on the external jacket and then we're going to be going for a black satin lapel and we're going for this anthracite grey which has got a slight warm tone to it and that will be used as the lining and then we're going to be going for a classic black covered button. Keeping it quite traditional but still getting a nice customised colour palette going on here and then we're just about to choose the style of the lapels themselves. As you can see there are lots of options so it's just ensuring that we pick the right one today. I don't really think you can go wrong with any of these if I'm completely honest, but we'll see what we decide. Because I think double breasted tux looks great. Okay. Because um, it's something you don't see all yeah. the time as well, you know, but of course then you are limited to how, just having the peak lapel. They, I have found the convenient, but let's go classic. Yeah. Yep. I actually think if I can have a plea, that just gives me a little bit of room that I need here. Plus, well, because you have gone for a double breasted feature as well, Actually, that plays a little bit more into it, which cool. is quite nice. Yeah. So I think a single pleat should be fine. I think a double pleat's a bit overkill. Yeah. These are double pleat, aren't they? Yeah. And I think they're a bit overkill, but I think a single pleat just gives me a little bit of something. Lovely. Whether you want to go for a zip or buttons, I'd highly recommend zip. Okay. Yeah. And just fine. because obviously buttons, especially with a slightly kind of finer fabric, it's more likely to weave. Can I get the zip with the button? Though? Yeah, of course you yeah. can. Yes. So I have the button there, and then the zip. Oh, these are so it will be. You will have the option with it. Sorry, the button would normally kind of be really kind of just here. Yeah, that's fine. You yeah. can have extended over, but the only thing I wouldn't recommend doing that because if you have an extended waistband, you then have a belt loop on top of it as well. But uh, zip and button. Well, as I say, it also follows the curvature of the leg a little bit better as well. Okay. Obviously, on my kind of like diagonal, yeah. and it's just really, really quite nice yeah. as a finish. And um, where you want to have no back pockets, you can have one, or you can have the option two. If you want a solid, completely clean look, it's, it's obviously the option for none. However, the thing I've noticed with people in the past is from looking from behind, you wouldn't necessarily know. You'd be like, maybe something's missing, you don't really know what's maybe quite wrong or mm -hmm. right there, and you'd be looking at it afterwards, oh, it's a pocket. Cause you, I, think I, I think I would have to. I'm just already looking at the different designs. <laughs> And if you're happy with kind of like that kind of feel and that kind of finish in the shoulder itself. So I feel like this one, my shoulder stick out too much. Right, okay. In this fit, and I felt like on the other one, the left side looks like it fitted really lovely. And I was still sticking out a little bit on my right, because my right shoulder must be bigger. So normally you fit, I mean, you're more dominant in the hand. Normally there's a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, ever so slightly. Right. Yeah. And my shoulder, obviously, I could tell it was dropped, because I could see it slightly there. Um, and it's obviously really picked up on the button. So annoying. <laughs> well, we are just finished up at Dooley and Rostron. Love the mannequins. Beautiful. All of their chinos and fabrics. Well, if you're looking for the Dooley and Rostron store, there you go. And that is the little window where you're going to get your coffee from. Factory coffee. I can confirm it is absolutely delicious. Well worth the visit. Well, we just quickly popped around the corner to the local library, which has this absolutely beautiful building. So we thought we'd quickly use the opportunity before we jump back on the train to take a couple of photos of today's outfit of the day. And also, I'm filming a reels where I'm basically showcasing a load of outfits with me walking along. So we're just filming them like as the days go on, as opposed to just keep on changing loads of outfits every day. It's a bit of a 
a longer process, but it means that at the end of it, I'm gonna get a nice reel where I showcase a load of different outfits in a load of different environments. So uh, we're gonna film that. So we've currently got the DJI OM4 just calibrating on the ground. So today I'm wearing this Todd's bomber with a lovely quilted finish. Um, underneath, I've got this kind of like army style ribbed knit on from Moss Bros. I've got the Daniel Mason dog tags. Um, I've got the double pleated Lardini trousers and I've got my church's boots to finish off the look. So I'm gonna quickly film this and then we're gonna get shooting. Just squeezing in a quick fresh mint tea before we hit the train. Very delicious. Little cheeky Garluccio stop. Very good. Okay, Dummy, we're gonna go out the back door as well. Yeah. You're getting a big boy already. Yes, you are. How's that feel? Warm? Yeah. Yeah. Your little roll neck, you'll roll out there. Well, whilst Lydia's out on a morning walk with Porter, because obviously he has a lot longer walks than Barkley's going to be having, I'm going to be taking him on a few puppy strides, just up and down the lanes, get him used to going out. I'll probably take him out for like 20 minutes or something and see um, if he'll get walking. Because one thing that I've noticed with having Porter and already with Barkley is they love sniffing stuff. I mean, everything must just be overwhelming exciting new and so they don't do much walking they're just always in the hedges sniffing around and eating everything every leaf every stone they just get, get it in their mouth so um yeah i'm going to take him out this morning try and get him used to it and hopefully within a matter of weeks we'll have him walking uh, as opposed to exploring and um and then eventually in maybe like six months to a year we'll have him joining us with Porter on the long walks but obviously he's just a little bit too little at the moment for those so we are dividing and conquering we've not even left the house and you're already trying to eat mud this is not food well it's a lovely frosty morning birds are circling the field this is a prime example of puppy walking everything in the mouth Walking sideways, not forward, and sniffing. Barkley, what's this? <gasps> Barkley! Good boy, come on! Now, I'm absolutely baffled. I don't know how he's done this because there's a harness on top. Little Houdini here manages to get his leg out of his sweater. Well, he's one of them. How have you done that? I don't understand. That is outrageous. You coming for a walk, mate, or are you just going to stay in this little spot where I put you down? It's all very exciting, isn't it? Sounds like that's a stone. Maybe not. Come on. Off, off. Off there. Yeah, good boy. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Barkley. Everything is in the mouth, isn't it, mate? That, that is mud. <laughs> what is that? Eh? What is that? A little bit of movement, a little bit of sniffing. Good boy. This is what we like to see. Yes. All those little baby steps. I get it though. I mean, this is going to be... It's one of the first times he's ever been out. Oh, off. That's poo. That's rabbit poo, mate. You don't want that. Although you probably really do. Come on. I also actually forgot to mention before I left the house earlier that today's a good day and tomorrow's going to be a good day as well because for the first time in a while, I'm going to go and play golf today at Luton Hoo and then tomorrow I'm playing at Fox Hills in Surrey. And so I'm really looking forward to getting out. Hopefully the weather stays nice and fresh and crisp. As long as it's not foggy and dry, then golf is 
pretty much game. So I used to be a fair weather golfer. As my enthusiasm has grown uh, for the game, I am more than willing to go out when it's freezing cold because there's no such thing as bad weather. There is just bad dressing. So I always go prepared now and uh, I don't get caught out. So I'm looking forward to it, should be good. We're actually going down to have a meeting with Galvin Green, who are a golf apparel company. I actually wore one of their polos at the BMW Pro-Am last year, which I purchased from uh, my dad's golf club. The quality was just fantastic. And so I'm looking forward to going to meeting with them today, hearing about their plans. Um, as we're coming into spring, summer, they'll be dropping new collections. So it should be a good day of golf and a good day of golf talk. So today's will be great. And then tomorrow I'm actually playing with a couple of friends that I've never played golf with before. So it'd be interested to see A, how I play, but also how they play. And uh, it'll just be nice to catch up and also play the Fox Hills because I've heard great things about the course, but I've never actually played. Good boy, come on. Come on. Good boy. Come on. Let's get those lengths in, boy. Come on. I know you guys aren't going to be able to see it, but he's got mud in his mouth. Or a leaf. Looks like a leaf. Yeah, squeaky bum. Come on. Come on. I know, I know. Come on. Soon you will be craving to do this. You just don't know it yet. Oh, little squeaky bum. That was a good little go though, mate. Yeah. Let's get... <laughs> Come on. Good boy. Come on. Come on. Come on then. You know that the way back to the house is nicer, isn't it? Because you know you're going to the warm. So you walk fine back. Good boy. Aren't you being a good boy? Yes. This is what we like to see, Barkley. Yes, we do. Top walker. Got a lot of time for that. Very proud daddy. Yes. Oh, that was nearly 10 meters without interruption of a sniff. Well, I've got my clubs and my caddy loaded up in the back of the Defender. So we're gonna start our journey to Luton Hoo. So for any of those that don't know, that is Luton Hoo Hotel and Spa. And you can't actually see it from here, but over there is the golf club. So I'm gonna get the clubs out and we're gonna get playing. We have just arrived to Luton Hoo and one of the things that I absolutely love about this golf club, not just the fact that there's like a mansion or a manor house on site, but they have got such a beautiful array of birds and that's such a me thing to say but there are herons pheasants they've got peacocks here it's just thriving with wildlife and i love that because when you're walking around you get to enjoy and take in all of the beautiful surroundings you also get to see some lovely wildlife so it's a win-win for me but i'm going to switch over to my phone hopefully i'll get a couple of clips of us playing golf and hopefully fingers crossed i'm gonna have a good game no warm-up today just straight on <laughs> and because is that because of golf? Yeah. You know, the green and golf you wanted to have with ground would relate to golf somehow. Yeah, um, makes sense. So he started off in golf, didn't do much in the first year then.
we're currently on the 17th. It is very windy as you can see. The eyes are getting a little bit watery, but just played um, probably my best drive of the day, which I'm very happy about. It's not been the best of golf. Um, I've definitely played better, but it's uh, all been part of the fun. I've played a few shots just to sort of get a bit of practice in. And um, yeah, so far it looks like we're gonna be exiting the game on a high, so can't complain. So we just got back in the car. How lucky have we got with this weather? It's a little bit fresh, I'm not gonna lie, but it's just been nice and dry. The course here at Luton Hoo was surprisingly good. Not that I'd had low expectations of the course, but because of the time of year, winter courses are often not in the best of conditions. The fairways looked amazing. The greens were pretty good. Um, and just the general course maintenance was like really high. Yeah, I was impressed. I thought the course was in really good condition. My game, as I mentioned earlier, wasn't the best. Not the best golf I've played by a long shot. I hit a couple of nice shots and that's all that really matters. And I can continue to work on my game. I think I'm going to start getting lessons in uh, spring ready for um, kind of dialing in for my, my best golf in the summer. And so that is something I'm going to be actioning in the near future. But I've just got into the car to have a quick bite to eat before I hit the road. And fingers crossed we can beat rush hour because I do not want to get stuck in that. Sometimes you've just got to stop to appreciate it. Hello. 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 Good boy. You missed your daddy, yeah? <laughs> Well, that is all we'll have time for this week. I am gonna get myself an early-ish night. It's currently 10 o'clock. Um, I'm up tomorrow at probably, I think I need to get up at about half six latest um, because I need to be leaving the house at 7.30 a.m. because I didn't realize I've got quite a long drive uh, to get to Fox Hills. So it's gonna be a long day tomorrow, especially after a five hour game of golf but it'll be worth it i'm looking forward to playing and i'm looking forward to catching up with the lads but these boys are currently snoozing in their beds and i've just finished off getting all of my um bits sorted ready for tomorrow so i'm as efficient as possible oh sorry it's very dark so i'm as efficient as possible uh, when i get up in the morning because i don't want to be faffing around trying to sort out my outfit for uh, playing golf so i'm all racked up and yes, that is how many layers I'm wearing tomorrow. One, two, three, four, five. Five layers. Hopefully that'll keep me warm. That's obviously just the top half. Also, I just came up here whilst I was doing it and I noticed um, I'd left this out. Dior have just released their latest sport fragrance and I wore this um, yesterday and I am very impressed. So if you are in store or you get the opportunity to sample this, this is a really lovely fragrance and certainly a fragrance that I'll be wearing a lot day to day. Just as a little sneak peek, this is some of my like go-to fragrances that I kind of like grab every day. So you can see on there, I've got like the Boss Bottled Selection. I've got my Carolina Herrera, the Parfum de Mali one that I got a Christmas time, which was exclusive to Harrods. A couple of the Tom Ford fragrances. Uh, Ombre Leather is very lovely. And they've also got this one as well, which they brought out at Christmas. This is like a really kind of like smoky, sort of spicy scent. They're very nice at Christmas wearing that. But anyway, I thought I'd just mention that whilst I was up here. But outfit of the day is a, a dressing gown with some slippers. I thought this would be a very practical outfit for the evening. <laughs> and I'm going to sign this vlog off. So I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Have a lovely weekend and a good rest of the week. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Peace.